I don't think you can get any better than this. Wow, this is kind of nerve wracking. Wow, there's a giant little hole right there where it's kind of breaking. A gigantic largemouth bass. <laughs> Jeez, are you kidding me? Oh, dude, I popped it out of the grass. That's incredible. And let me get your little fin right there. Boop. Oh, don't put the hook in me, please. Welcome back to another video, folks. We are standing in front of Academy Sports and Outdoors, and we're gonna be doing something a little bit special today. I'm very excited about it. We are about to go in this store, and we are going to create the ultimate spring bass fishing tackle box for under $100. These budget challenges are a ton of fun. You guys have been asking for them a lot more often. I'm gonna give it to you here today. After we build that budget fishing kit, we are gonna head to a juiced up trophy bass palm with our e-bikes doing a little bit of bank fishing with only one goal in mind, to catch a giant springtime bass. Smash the thumbs up button if you like these challenge style videos and I will make sure to do more in the future. Let's get inside. Now before we actually build this fishing kit, I have something really exciting to show you guys. That's right folks, we've got Guggen Squad apparel now in the store. Dude. Oh, no way, dude. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Did not plan that at all, happy accident. So look, they got that performance shirt. They got this one, which is always one of my favorites from back in the day. This is the Academy in Dothan, Alabama. So for all of you local subscribers, you uh, better get your Guggen performance gear while you can, because I have a feeling that now that you guys know that it's here, it's gonna go pretty quick. Fishing kits, they come in all shapes and sizes. I've been lucky enough to see the fishing kit industry kind of boom over the last few years. A lot of these didn't even exist like two or three years ago, but because of YouTube, because of the popularity of bass fishing, fishing kits like pre-packaged, pre-built fishing kits have just become all the rage nowadays. But there's always one problem. No matter how big the fishing kit is or no matter how loaded you think it is, it's always missing something. It's always missing something that you need or you want. So I found that building your own fishing kit is really the best way to go. By the way, big shout out to H2OX, which is like the new Academy brand. It used to be H, just H2O, right? H2O Express. H2O Express, that's right. That was the Academy brand. They had lures, they had all kinds of stuff, but they've rebranded that to H2OX. I'm not gonna lie to you, this stuff looks pretty good. It does, dude. I mean, it's not as good as Guggen Green, in my opinion. For example, this box right here is $8.49. That's one of the cheaper tackle boxes I've seen. And I think this is gonna be the perfect building block for us to create our very own spring bass fishing kit. And that's only $8.49, so we're not gonna do tax. Let's just say a nice even $8.50, okay? Now it's time to load this bad boy. We're gonna start this thing off in the soft plastic section. So first up is gonna be one of my favorite baits of all time. And that's gonna be the trench hog right there, the Guggen Baits trench hog. And this color specifically is Okeechobee Crawl, but it's like a green pumpkin with a very bright fluorescent blue on the back of it. It's got some blue flake in there. This is the ultimate creature bait right here. If you like lizards and you like crawfish, and you like to bed fish during the spring, this thing is a great combination of all three. It's got a very unique look that I think the bass have really not gotten accustomed to yet. And that thing right there will catch fish. It's not a question of if, it's a question of how many and how big they're gonna be. That's a solid $6.50, which brings our total up to $15 total, right? $15, we are still in great shape. Now, my other favorite bait, especially Guggen bait at this time of year, is gonna be the Kraken Crawl right here. Everybody knows you gotta have a good crawfish invitation because you've got bed fishing coming up. And if that bass is on a bed, that male or the female, that crawfish, when you flip it onto that bed, it really triggers a strike a lot of the time. That bait was also 650, so now we're up to 2150. Yes. Now, this next bait might seem a little unconventional to you guys at first, but just hear me out. The old nag draft, okay, the swim bait. People tend to think the big swim baits are not a springtime lure, and I'm here to tell you, they can be. This thing has caught a lot of big fish in the past for a lot of people. The only problem with it is it's $14.99, it's $15. Let's just call it an even $36 now where we are. Oh. That's how you know a lure might be overpriced if there's an actual alarm on it. They're worried about people walking out with jackhammers. If it's, if it's expensive enough to put an alarm on, I'm not interested as a budget angler, I'm just saying. Now what I can get down with is a little bit of a chatterbait right here. Here we go, 3 8 ounce chatterbait, $4.99 chartreuse and white that's going to cover us in any situation if the water's dirty or if it's not that brings our budget up to 41 dollars 
Now the chatterbait is just as effective to me as a spinnerbait this time of year. And the reason being, any of these pre-spawn reaction style lures, something that's moving, it's gonna cause the bass to react to it. That's what I'm looking for, just to let you guys into my head. And the spinnerbait is just as good of a presentation as the chatterbait. It's really all just personal preference. Dude, this new packaging for H2OX is kinda sick, I'm not gonna lie. It looks good, man. Now you guys know I prefer the clutch, right? The Guggen crankbait. But here's the thing, this one's only $3.99, okay? So this is kind of a budget challenge. That's $4 and where we're going has a ton of shad. So anytime you're trying to imitate shad, I always think of lipless crankbait. It's the easiest way to do it. It's one of those easy lures to work. You chuck it out there as far as you can. You wind it back in. A lot of times that's all it takes to catch some springtime pre-spawn bass. We're only at $52. I feel like we've done something wrong. I mean, look at all this stuff we've got for $52. We should have just made it a $50 challenge. And once again, I would prefer a Guggen frog, but when these are $10 in a budget challenge, and you can get one for $5 right next to it, dude, look at that thing. It looks kind of sick, dude. Kind of sick. It's a little small, but I actually like that because we're going to a pond. That's, that's why I really like that. If we were going to a full-size lake, I want a full-size frog. Smaller body of water, smaller bait. That's how my mind works. We're up to $57. Since we're talking about top water with the top water frog, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a white buzz bait, guys. You guys already know the deal. I don't have to explain it. I've proven that this thing works time and time again. Hopefully I can prove it today. The reason why I like to focus on top water some in the pre-spawn as well is because those fish are coming up shallow. We already know that. They're coming up to find beds, build beds, protect beds, right? That's what they're doing right now. So because they're coming up in that shallow water, we're giving them a reaction style lure that's on top of the water. So even in the shallowest of water, I can access those big bass that are coming up. That buzz bait was $7, bringing our total up to 65. So I was able to find some quarter ounce tungsten weights and some three aught, yeah, extra wide gap hooks for our terminal tackle. Those are gonna be for our Texas rigs, the trench hog, the bandito bug. I was able to get both of those for $11 combined, bringing us up to 76. Yes. I thought you were keeping track. I kinda was, but you put me on the spot and I blanked very hard. Pretty sure we're at like the 75, $76 range, which is great because we've gotten all the things that we have to have. Now we have $25 to kind of play around with, Maybe grab a couple of wild card lures, maybe an extra soft plastic, I'm not sure. But I'm liking the way this tackle box is shaping up. Since we've already got a bunch of lures that need trailers, like a buzz bait, spinner bait, chatter bait, might as well get a $4 pack of really cheap white paddle tail trailers. And we could always Texas rig these as well if we wanted to, just like a bed fishing bait, like a super low profile, you know, drop it on a bed and hope a fish eats it. But that's only four bucks. That brings us to 80 total almost there but this thing right here you guys ever seen this thing before it's actually pretty sick you guys sick. you guys know we're big alabama rig people because we fish the river a lot this is like a tiny little mini alabama rig one of my favorite lures of all time not even gonna lie i know it looks kind of goofy but i have caught big bass on this thing now it's 15 dollars, but at this stage in the game we have our tackle box already full we've stayed within budget and with tax and everything this is probably going to take us right to 100 dollars. this will be like a wild card lure today especially if the other stuff's not working Okay, now we've got all of our stuff right here. We need to buy this stuff, see what our total was, go out there, build this tackle box, head out to the water, and see if we can complete today's challenge, which is catching big bass. That's right. That's the only way Always. that we can end this challenge, folks. Stay tuned. All right, folks, boom. There you have it. Fully assembled, $100 the best spring fishing kit that we could possibly create. And shablam. I don't think you can get any better than this springtime. You've got your top water, you've got your wire baits, like your reaction style, you've got your cranks, got a swim bait, got plenty of plastics, you got your Texas rig setups. I mean, seriously, what is, what is that? What else could you put in that box for $100 to cover you in any springtime situation. We've got some weather moving in, so we're gonna keep an eye on that, but it's time for us to get rigged up, get the e-bikes out of the old F-250, because that way we can be a little bit more stealth around the edges of this pond. We just talked to the owner of the lake, and he said the big bass are coming up shallow. Like, he's confirmed it. He's seen a bunch of them swirling around, chasing shad. He said he's even seen some fry in the water, meaning the spawning is already happening as we speak. All right, so I went ahead and rigged up three of the lures in the tackle box. I'm gonna show you guys really quickly. We got the chatterbait on this one right here with that little white paddle tail trailer. Got the Hummer, the buzz bait, of course, with another white trailer as well. And then we got the trench hog Texas rig. So that right there for my money, 
for these conditions too obviously where you're fishing matters and the conditions matter but for us we just got a little bit of rain it's overcast the fish are shallow so i mean these presentations kind of reflect that dang it well we got to figure out some type of a rod situation for these bikes the whole reason i crashed last time is because i had something in my hand and i couldn't fully grasp the handlebars i think we need to head all the way to the back back here where it gets the shallowest there's the old magical bridge can we cross her in the bikes go ahead go ahead and cross her wow this is kind of nerve-wracking wow there's a giant little hole right there where it's kind of breaking wow i don't want to do that again that was a little scarier and sketchier that hole and i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that hole that'll that'll make you pucker up right there let's just take a look see let's just look because we haven't fished back here in a long time oh it's super shallow yeah this is clearly the shallowest water in the pond and i'm hoping therefore it's going to be loaded with fish nice little scum on the water got a nice little pollen layer do people other places in the country even know about pollen not like we do wow that wood sounds really sturdy i'm throwing the buzz bait a little bit i'm sorry gotta do it dude look at all that submerged grass and stuff right there could be you do you know bass get up in there now there's no sun so we really can't like see anything i can't see i don't think i could even see a bass in the water if there was one there maybe the sun will poke its head out a little bit later in the past there would always be a bass bedding underneath this tree right here in fact it used to be a it was a pretty good size one if i remember correctly Jeez, look at that man Look at how weak that is. We just drove over that. No, dude, that's the hole. That oh my right gosh. There. Why did we do that? That's, that's I know. I don't want to even look at it anymore because I don't like standing on it. We just rode over it with bikes. Yeah, let's, let's adventure. I don't know where it goes either. Yeah, I've never been back here. I don't know. We could be heading to his like secret hunting camp for all I know. Oh, good. It's starting to rain again. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I never really fish over on this side. This looks like a juicy little corner. God, if we get a little bit of light rain on the top of the water, that's gonna help this buzz bait a lot. Bass will crush a buzz bait in the rain. Okay, well, we definitely traveled to the worst bank fishing side. So maybe we should go back to where the bank fishing is actually accessible. Okay, that first one was just a trial run. That was just a trial lap around the pond. Now we've got a rain jacket. We're good to go. I think we need to... Oh, yes! Oh, the gooch punch. I think the point right here will be a perfect base camp because this bank goes all the way back there to that point and the fishing's normally pretty good. And we can walk this way as well. I don't know how shallow the bass are. They might be shallow, but they got to be pretty shallow for them to eat a buzz bait. There's almost always one or two big swirling bass right in this little cove. Oh, 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 oh. I may have just had one wake it on me, but I got in the grass. You see that little swirl over there? Now that was in like inches of water, so. Yeah, I'd say they're pretty dang shallow if that was a bass. Dang it, man. That means my job now is to irritate. Oh, there's a dude chasing it. Come on, I can't, I can't kill the bait like you normally would. It's so grassy right there. I think there's two bass right here. Great sign for that shallow. These bass are right up against the bank. Oh, I spooked them out that time. Dude, there's a, there's a bass just hanging out right there. Gotta be bad dude. I'm gonna try the trench hog. I wish that the weight was lighter, but it's okay. Where was her about right there? Let's see what she thinks about a trench hog near her bed. Well, you know, sometimes what they'll do, if you come in and disturb them and they want to be shallow, they'll just move kind of like right off. 
of where they were and just sit there and wait for the disturbance to leave. I got a fish. Got him. Come here. Okay, nice way to start the day here. Little guy, but fish nonetheless. How much you want to bet this right here is a male? Nice, healthy little fish though, and aggressive, doing his job as the male bass, pr presumably guarding a bed or a spawning area. I don't know. Trench hog though, baby. Trying to tell you guys, the spawn and trench hog, they go together. Trench hog, battle tested. Always comes through. Love this thing. It's a unique look and it freaking works. What else can you say? Now that's one of the smaller fish you're gonna catch out here. So that gives me a lot of hope. It's probably nowhere but up as far as size wise today. So that one was kind of off. He was not shallow. He was out there. This whole area right here is also like, it's not as deep as you think. It's kind of like a shallow spawning flat. And there's a lot of grass. As you guys can see, there's more of this grass that goes out there. And the bass just get, they just get sacked in there. I may have just got eaten again. Nope, 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 not yet. Don't jump the gun, Rojo. There it is. <laughs> Had another wow, one. Wow, dude. Pulled it out of his mouth. So, yeah, like I said, this is a big spawning flat. So I can already tell you within 10 minutes of fishing, these fish are exhibiting straight up spawning behavior. These are probably aggressive males, but let's just hope that we come across a big territorial female. Well, let's keep this let's keep this party moving here. I think I want to go that way first. I want to switch to some moving baits and I want to go that way. Got him. Oh, wow. Well, I mean, he yeah, that's a good one, man. On the chatterbait. Oh, man, he was in inches of water. No, no, no. Don't go to the grass. Go this way. Nice fish, man. Heck yeah, dude. Look at that. Woo, boy. Nice little three and a half pounder right there. Oh, my gosh. Hook was just like on her, <laughs> on her lip like that, like that. Dude, yeah, you barely touched it. Wow. Oh, she's peeing. Dang, I'm sorry, girl. Dang. Didn't mean to put you on blast like that. Dude, oh, it's a tagged fish. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, that's a nice little three and a half pounder right there. Got a lot of belly. Got a lot of pee in her, apparently, too. Oh, the chatterbait crushed it and started swimming immediately. So by the time I felt the bite, my line had already gone like three feet to the left. That was a crazy fight. Crazy bite. That's what springtime bass fishing is all about right there. Girl, I'm gonna let you go back. Another thing about springtime bass fishing is you figure this bass may have come off a bed right here, so I'm gonna let her go right here immediately so she can go right back to whatever stage of the spawn she's in. I don't want to disturb the process any more than we have to by catching them. Dude, heck yeah, it might be a chatterbait kind of day, man. Might be, dude. And those kinds of bites and in inches of water, you're having to reel it like super fast, you know what I mean? Like, I'm making this cast and I'm immediately like rod tip up kind of cranking because it's so shallow and there's so much grass you have to work it that way dude this wind is only going to help the moving bait bite i can tell you that if it starts like holding like this we probably get moving bait bites all day well since i've caught a fish on the chatterbait and the trench hog not like this is a slam or anything but i just want to demonstrate to you guys how all of these lures that i picked like how they're going to work and when you're going to throw them what it looks like and that they're still effective, you know? So I'm gonna fish the rest of this little area right here with the buzz bait. So I'm really hoping that top water bite is gonna be on too. It's probably in that knot right there, is it? In the line? It might be, you'll have to check when it comes back in. Massive fray. Oh, nice call, dude. Good freaking call yeah, on up. that, brother. Wow, that's a great point that Andrew just made. If you're using braid and you see a fray in your line, cut it, or at least give it the hand test like I just did and try to pull on it and see if it'll break. Because right there, if I had gotten a bite right there, I lose that fish. 100%. 100%. Oh my God. 
fish. How did that fish not eat it? That was ridiculous. That fish nosed up on it, like followed it and was right behind it for like two seconds. I've never seen one get that close and not eat. Folks, if you're still watching, it's your lucky day. Cause now you're gonna have a chance to win this fishing kit. That's right. Big shocker, I'm not keeping this kit. I'm gonna give it away to one of you guys. That way you can be decked out for the springtime. So all you have to do to enter this giveaway is like normal, smash the thumbs up button that likes the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel with the bell notification enabled. I'll announce the winner in the next video. Let's get back to fishing. You gotta be careful when you bank fishing springtime. A really helpful tip that somebody told me a long time ago. When you're gonna fish an area of the bank, don't walk right up to it because these fish, they get in such skinny water this time of year, you're, you're likely gonna spook them out. So if you've got an area that you wanna fish, you almost wanna like go down the bank from it and then go and try to parallel cast rather than just like walking right up to the spot that you wanna fish. Cause I just spooked one out right there that I maybe could have caught. All right, made a couple lure switches. I left the uh, chatterbait on there because I have a lot of confidence that right this second, but I switched up from the buzzbait to the frog and I switched up from the trench hog to the crack and crawl just to show you guys a little bit of the variety and why I picked all these lures. These e-bikes are so sick. Talk about a bank fisherman's dream right here. And it's silent, which is like the best part. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like I think there could be a fish anywhere on this bank. So I definitely don't want to walk right up on it yet. I want to at least hit it with a couple casts to see Make sure there's nobody home. And it's underwater. <laughs> when you're budget frog shopping, folks, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, how these companies can make a frog that sinks like that, it's just, it, it's, it's almost like a, it's almost difficult to imagine making a frog that sinks. Like, how do you do that? I mean, the thing's literally going underwater every third pop. What in the heck? Sorry, H2OX, but that's, that's balderdash. I don't know about this dock, man. Oh, that's good. Think yeah. so? Yeah? yeah. What about this? I mean, this side. Oh, dude, we're good. Yeah. We're, we're great right now. This is great because now I can access all this stuff right here in front of all these trees. If I fall in, it's only like two feet deep. And when I set the hook, I better not take a step. No, you better not. I better stay flat footed. Damn it, so grassy. These weights are too heavy. You almost need like a, oh, dude, I popped it out of the grass. That's incredible. That's a nice fish too. I'm coming back, Andrew. Oh, dude, that was so freaking cool, man. Another like three and a half pounder. Wow, hooked in the bottom of the lip. Dude, that was crazy. I was sitting there complaining about how my, oh, don't put the hook in me, please. Oh, I was just complaining about how my, Crack and crawl was getting stuck in the grass. As you can see, this bass was definitely in the grass. So I think when I was doing those big, hard, like, pop-ups, yep. it just popped it up on top of the grass long enough for this bass to absolutely annihilate it. Wow. Freaking, that's why that's you sick. fish the spawn right there, folks. You get these fish in this super shallow water. And you can see right here, this is a great representation of how grassy this lake is right here. Now, she just kind of eased out. Yes, she did but they'll just sit there and stuff like this. I mean, they will just absolutely sit in it. I mean, it's thick, your bait's getting stuck in it, but you give it a good pop and there might just be a bass right there. And if they see something just emerge out of that grass, they're gonna eat it almost every time, especially in the springtime. All right, we got some new lures in the rotation here. We went ahead and tied on the old mag draft because you know what? It's that time of year and I want to catch a big one. We also tied on the mini A-Rig as well because there's a ton of shad in this lake, so it kind of makes sense anyways. And of course we benched the frog, put back on the buzz bait. So got an all white, all shad imitator group going on right now. So we need to go where the shad are. 
which is on the opposite side of the lake of where we've been. I just don't know if the buzz is doing it today. I hate to say that. <laughs> Jeez, are you kidding me? Look at that fast fight. Wow. Don't think the buzz is going to do it today, he says. Dude. Oh, you couldn't write that better in a movie. God, they're so aggressive right now. That attack and the, and the fight right after was crazy. That was so sick, dude. This fish, he's like, he's, he's that guy in this pond. Oh, yeah. This fish is like definitely all about that life, if you know what I mean. Wow. Man, another like, like nice three pounder. I mean, all these fish are super nice. They're aggressive. They're beautiful. Oh, the yeah. coloring is awesome. The aggressiveness is just off the charts. Wow, guys, jeez. And we're also doing like a hell of a slam right now. I mean, we're catching them on everything we put in that box. Buzzbait fish is down. Heck yeah, man. Dude, this fish deserves like a, an actual like fist bump. Like, <laughs> That's dude, a fact. I respect the heck out of you, man. Let me get your little fin right there. Boop. See you, bud. I know you don't need to be eased back in. He's just ready to go. Did you see how he fought? Dude, First of tank. all, he swam right into the bank. Like I think he actually mm -hmm. hit ground. And then he went sideways and did a backflip because he jumped, but I was pulling from the opposite direction. So it like flipped him yeah, over. That was sick. Dude, that was incredible. Holy moly. Just when you think you know what the fish want, you don't. Oops. Wow, how about that? Top water, pre-spawn, march. Buckle your seatbelts. All right, well, in the spirit of kind of trying to make this thing into a slam, I'm gonna put the buzz down now. I'm really gonna focus for a while on these two, which would probably be considered some of the harder lures in there to catch fish on. This end of the lake where the dam is, is loaded with shad. They all seem to congregate here. So that's why I feel like this is my best chance to catch a fish on either one of these two lures. Oh my God, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. There's, there's bass like spawning right there. There was two bass. One of them was like rolled over on the side. There's a bald eagle just grabbed the freaking two pound bass out of the lake right there. That was crazy. What is happening? If we get all the way to this corner without one on this, I'm gonna switch to that. Oh dude, we're, oh my God. I was just on and I pulled it out of his mouth. Dude, that felt like a ton of bricks. It like stopped the swim bait. The only problem with this design is the fact that like two thirds of it is not hooked. So if they come up and like short eat it, then they're not gonna get the treble that's, that's underneath. So mm -hmm. that's the only bad part about it. And I get why they made it that way, is to make it very weedless, and which it is. Dang, man, I felt like enough of the pressure to know that something had it. Yeah, I just see your rod bend. Oh, dude, yeah, I mean, there's no doubt. And then, but it was just gone. Like, it opened its mouth, and then, boom, didn't get the hook. Now, this thing's interesting. Andrew was just throwing it a minute ago. I like it, dude. Dude, it's a cool little bait. And the only downside is all of these dummy, dummy plastics, they don't have hooks on. So they can get hit too, and then you, you won't catch a fish, obviously. So yeah. you hope that they're gonna key in on the big one, but it's not always the way it goes. Oh! oh. What did I just <laughs> do? I just hit that T-post, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Fudge. Dude, it takes skill to be you, man. Damn it. Dude, I freaked this reel up. <laughs> and you barely just barely caught the tip of it i saw the whole thing happen i thought i i thought i threw the lure off that's why i was originally upset well, i, I was... thought you snapped the line on it yeah well, that's what i mean wow Dang, gee okay. okay okay this has got a nick in it but i'm sending it dude you're gonna regret that <laughs> don't you tell me what i'm gonna regret you don't know <laughs> yeah well i i will i've deserved it if that's how it goes down i mean look at that that, if that don't look like four minnows swimming by, I don't know what it looks like. That's about as real of a presentation as it could possibly be right now. And truth be told, this lure, this was not like really a spring choice. This was just like a bonus lure, you know, because we, we had the extra budget. 
I'm not even that upset if this lure doesn't work. All right, we got one more stop to make. Well, maybe one more, at least one more. There's one place we haven't really been yet on the lake, and that's across the lake. Oh my God. I just looked, you see that plume right there? A gigantic largemouth bass just came up and just sat right there. I looked down, I saw him, he saw me and took off. Probably like a six plus pounder. Dang it, dude. Huge. Oh, I'm gonna come over here and try to fish back that way. <laughs> Cause geez, he might come back. I just looked down and there he was. Couldn't believe it. Not what you're expecting to see. When you just look down at your feet, right. you're figuring you've already spooked all the bass out that are gonna be there. Oh no, not the big ones. Brick. That's gonna leave a sour taste in my mouth if that's the last bass I see today. All right, folks, that's it, we're calling it. But here's the thing, I mean, we could have, we could have just thrown the Texas rig stuff and we probably could have caught fish all day. Like, that's the thing. All the fish were pretty much shallow, tight around the whole bank, you guys saw. But I didn't want to do that. I wanted to actually show you guys the different lures, the variety of lures that I chose, and show you that multiple lures can work in this situation. So I think we missed a couple. We didn't use the crankbait, never got to the spinnerbait. But I think we used everything else, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah. If you guys missed it, I am giving this away. But uh, go back in the video and you'll see the instructions on how to win this thing. I want to set one of you guys up for the springtime. So hopefully you guys have entered the giveaway already. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that little video. Much more videos like that coming, more challenge videos, more straight up fishing videos, more building stuff videos, more videos with Daryl. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'm out of here.